There's a number of photo hotspots in the world and one of my favourite is Lamington National Park. It's just at the back of the Gold Coast and it's a place that offers 135 kilometres of walking tracks and it's rainforests of four different types. It's an incredible place for a photographer to come and learn about photography right from the basics. Difficult lighting, difficult subjects, look how hard it is to get the birds. So what's so special about the bird life here is they're so used to people and you just don't see that anywhere else. It's a really unique experience. You get to have birds all flying all over you, landing on your head. It's just a real treasure and I've never been anywhere quite like it. Since the 1930s, the O'Reilly family has set up here with beautiful birds like that male king parrot that you just saw. It's an amazing place because they've fed the birds. Now, not everyone agrees about feeding birds, but in this particular case, it's been done for so long now that the birds treat it just as a supplement to their normal food. So we get to experience birds of all types, regent bowerbirds, satin bowerbirds, king parrots, crimson rosellas, you wait and see. Some of the imagery we're going to take this week will blow you away. There's one famous shot up at um, O'Reilly's, which is the shot of the uh, regent bowerbird in flight. And it's the shot that every photographer wants to take. And it's hard to capture it. And that's a shot we try to get and again and again every morning out at the front of the O'Reilly's Lodge. This morning, we're using a couple of different techniques. Very simple outfit. We're using a 24 to 70, our GP lens. We're going high shutter speed. We're actually going manual, 2,000th of a second, F8 and auto ISO focusing to continuous focusing and we're then looking at tracking the birds as best as possible. Remember this is a real high action type situation and getting the birds to come to us with their wings open which is a really unusual opportunity. The images are spectacular, the experience is amazing. We're mixing our focusing. We're using AI tracking, but we're also using some manual focus. So with manual, we're working at roughly where the bird's going to come in. We're setting it manually to that, and we're then using depth of field to our advantage. Now, obviously, we could be shooting at F4 or something like that. Depth of field's minimal. So we're using quite high motor drives. So we could be doing 10, 20, even 30 frames a second. I'm going to, on three, see if we can attract a bird or three. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. Here they come. So remember that the O'Reilly's family has been doing this opportunity here since 1930s. And it's the only reason you're getting to see these spectacular birds. Go anywhere else in the rainforest, you won't see these birds. And look how healthy they are. It's not as straightforward as it seems. You've got a fast moving subject with a busy background. The light's not great. And it, the birds are unpredictable as well. They fly in different patterns that will really challenge you. And that's a shot that you know is worth trying if you ever make it up here. We're going to shoot a lot of images and the result will be some spectacular world-class imagery. I think you'll agree the results speak for themselves. The bird life at O'Reilly's is amazing. And I really mean that. A great guide that used to work here at O'Reilly's was Glenn Threlfo. He desensitised birds to people. That has really opened up a lot of unique photographic opportunities and people come from all over the world to take images of birds that normally you cannot get up close. One of the birds that he has allowed us to see up close and a really difficult bird to see in the wild, we often hear it in certain places, is the whip bird. So we've got a bird here, he literally calls him Mr. Whippy, Mrs. Whippy and the kids. What I love about Mr. Whippy is a, a lovely experience. He hops around, he'll come right up to your point blank at times and it's a challenge to get a really good photograph of him because of the low light. They're real characters, they're quite cheeky, they're um, really unique looking with a sort of tufted head and a really beautiful um, fan tail out the back. On this particular occasion, because our cameras have improved quite a lot, we've actually been shooting 10,000 ISO, wide aperture, 2.8, 1,000 or 500th of a second shutter speed, and getting down low and using our screens to shoot at ground level. So this has opened up some new photographs. Another thing that's helped us a lot is Topaz Photo AI. It's new software just out on the market in the last few months, and that combined with the high ISO, we're shooting imagery we've never done before. Topaz 
takes out the noise, sharpens the image, and makes it look like a four or 800 ISO shot originally. It's quite amazing. Have a look at that software. We then go a little bit further into the rainforest, literally five, 10 meters, and suddenly there's a yellow-throated scrub wren, then there's an eastern yellow robin, there's satin bowerbirds, there's a huge amount of species that normally you would not get to see, let alone photograph. This is the great aspect of O'Reilly's rainforest retreat. For anyone who comes to a place like O'Reilly's, one of the highlights would be the Birds of Prey show, which is I believe been been running here for many years. So it's an opportunity to see some very rare birds up close in a way you don't ever get to experience, even in a zoo environment, and learn some amazing facts about some of the beautiful birds that can be found in Australia. We saw a couple of, I guess they're called raptors, and the chap who runs the show just loves the birds, and they seem to reciprocate that, which is lovely to see. Mark has set up this show for many, many years, and I say it's a show, really it's not. It's a chance to see rare, unusual animals up close. Today we had a few different birds. We had a barn owl, we had a barking owl, we had a brown falcon. And we saw a wedge-tailed eagle, which was huge, absolutely huge. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Photographically, I love to do portraits with this type of opportunity. I use a long lens generally, but because you can get closer to the animal, sometimes a 70 to 200 or something like that will work fine too. Open the aperture up. If you've got a 70 to 200, 2.8 for example, shoot it at 2.8. It drops the background out dramatically. Other opportunities include birds on the wing. So a couple of the key points using a, a telephoto lens, either using aperture priority, at 5.6, 4 to 800 ISO, let the shutter speed go up, and that helps you also limit the depth of field to drop out the background. Or go to manual exposure, shoot something like two thousandths of a second, F8 with auto ISO. We'll set ourselves up with those settings and we'll be patient and wait. We'll then time it that the moment we think the bird's going to fly, we start shooting. Digital shooting's free, isn't it? No, you've already spent big bucks, but you know what I mean. The great thing with that is you'll get a sequence of the bird bursting off the stick and then going into the air, and then you can track the bird as well. But the key to it is back off a little bit, allow space, use the megapixels available to you. You get some great results. You come away with just hundreds of, of images you would never be able to capture elsewhere. One of the key points I'm trying to recommend to the group is to watch the background, what's in the background. So looking at beautiful bokeh highlights in the background can be very pretty to your final result. You don't want chairs, people, fences, all that sort of thing. So I'm trying to position myself in such a way that I get a clean shot of the subject with a beautiful background. Isolation, clean background, you'll get great results. Birds, birds and more birds. We had an amazing time here. We've seen so many birds and we've had such a wonderful time in very, very pleasant surroundings. If you'd like to expand your creativity, why don't you join us? We're someplace different every year. We have a great time and I know everyone learns something new, including myself. That's what photography is all about.